Well, let's continue our election coverage. Now, this morning we speak to a sitting member, a member for just over six years, 67, married with two children, five grandchildren. He's nodding at me. I've got that bit right. Good Good morning, uh, East Douglas MHK, Chris Robertshaw. Morning, James. Tell me, you, you were the man I know who was, uh, well, uh, I suppose you were the man appointed to drive through that long-term change, um, new look, more efficient centre of government. Uh, it didn't work out quite like that, of course, but how far down the line do you think it's progressed or otherwise over the past five years? Well, I think the Isle of Man's done well externally, uh, and I've said so publicly. Internally, reform has not gone where it should have gone or as fast as it should have gone. Uh, and uh, obviously, you, you will know I got pretty exasperated with that, so so I stood down, and um, but still remain determined to see that reform happen because it must happen for the for the future the good future of the Isle of Man. If there's been a resistance to change, yes. Uh, what, what did you do or what have you tried to do done to bring people with you? Well, once I stepped down, I, I uh, d decided I was going to be a commentator and then realized that if I was going to be taken seriously that I had to stand again. So I'm actually now putting together my thoughts in detail and they're going to be captured in a, a manifesto of some difference, I think, because it's going to be called The Little Book of Government Reform. And I'm going to try and bring it all together as a concept and hopefully people will appreciate how important it is that government must now change if we're going to get things right for the future of the Isle of Man. Well, would you respectfully not have been better staying within as head of the cabinet office and trying to drive through that reform rather than bailing out after what just under a year just over a year in charge it's it's a fair question but the resistance was there there was no desire to really look at the degree of change necessary and it became a very frustrating and exasperating process so i stepped outside and have continued uh, where i left off effectively to argue for change well, would you if successful in the election would you expect to take a to be a government minister and play a key role in the next administration? My, well, first of all, let's let's just go back one step. One I mean, step at a time. Yeah, I mean, the my constituents have got to decide whether or not they're comfortable with this different approach. It's not, it's not a candidate coming forward saying, I'll do this, I'll do that, and I'll do the other. It's saying, look, where we're at now in terms of the way our government is structured isn't right. Will you support me in asking for these fundamental changes? And I need to go back in with a mandate from the constituents to that effect. They may choose otherwise, but I passionately believe in this and know that we must do it. So let's take it step by step. You've been very critical of the user agreement during your, your term. What, what do you make of this latest <laughs> investment pledge by the steam packet? Um, I have been critical of the user agreement since 1990-something. Uh, <laughs> nothing's changed there. But uh, what do I think? Um, not a great deal. Just tell me, is there much public confidence in our political system? Not a great deal, no. Well, uh, why is that? Um, because I think we, I pr promoted a, a, some discussion in the newspaper, I think it was early autumn, I think. Which the start of your election campaign, that well, Probably, yes. Which culminated in, in a, a, a headline which said, is government working for itself or is it working for the people? And that, that stirred it, things up a little bit. And I think we've got to get back to the concept that we do need a smaller, smarter government that genuinely is putting its people first. And I, I don't think we're there. In ten words or, or less, what, why should the people of East Douglas vote for you? Uh, because if they want a future, uh, a good future for the Isle of Man that's really going to make things happen, then I hope that they might choose to vote for me.